Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Listen, it's always an exciting time. Why? Because of the word of God that is going to come. Now I don't come like I have the word of God. I come in obedience to the Lord to share this message with you. And as I open my mouth, I expect him to feel it. Now it happens several, several times. You know, I had this plans. Okay, this is what we're going to talk about. But then the Spirit of God takes us in another dimension. Praise God. And then even at the end of it, I understand, oh, that is exactly what he meant by talk about this. Praise God. Now are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Praise God. Pray this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread. Amen. Praise God. A miracle is going to take place today. It's already taking place right now. Praise God. A door is opening for someone. A call is coming in for someone. Someone's been owing you some money over two years now. They are calling you to pay that money. Praise God. Don't get angry. Don't hold it against them. God is moving on them right now and they are paying that money. Praise God. When you receive it, rejoice in the Lord. Praise God. Because he wants your joy to be full. Remember Jesus said, ask and receive so that your joy may be full. Is there something that's been in your heart to ask the Lord? You can go ahead right now and ask him. Go ahead and ask him. No, no. Be specific. Be specific. Say, Lord, right, I'm telling you right now. Be specific. Say, Lord, I, I, I ask for this. I, I demand this, Lord. I ask for it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, you know why God is going to give it to you? Not because you are extra righteous. No, because he wants your joy to be full. Praise God. He, he, he loves it. What is your joy to be full? It's like, I have, I have a cow. I have um, a house. But I just wish God to give me a good wife. I just wish God to give me Praise God. Should I ask God for a wife? Oh, the Bible says... Riches and houses come from a father, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. If a prudent wife comes from the Lord, brother, you better open your mouth and ask the Lord, praise God, except you want to carry one, you know, any woman as a wife. But if you want a good wife, open your mouth and ask, praise God. And it says when you ask, he will give you. And what does he want to see when he gives you? That your joy may be full. Praise God. He wants to see you happy. He wants to see you excited. You know, people think God is a kill joy. You know, God, me, I want to travel for vacation. But I know God will not allow me. He will tell me I should go to the village and preach to God. Who told you that? Who, who's preached that to you? No, 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 no. He wants your joy to be full. I'll tell you what, when, when you go on that vacation and, and you, you go on, maybe it's a play vacation. I mean, you, you take, listen, you need to rest. You need to relax. Take out time with your family. Enjoy life. Praise God. So you get on, maybe you travel somewhere where they have a children's park and then you get on that swing and your children are just happy. Hey, hey, hey. That, 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 that facial expression is what God sees. And he, he calls the angels together and says, hey, look, look, look at those my grandchildren over there. Praise God. Oh, look at them. Look at how they are smiling. Oh, it pleases me so much. You don't know. God is interested in your smile. Praise God. He is. He's a, when you receive a miracle and say whoa you see that thing you just said whoa god is god say yeah praise god he loves it when we're excited he doesn't love it when we are doing we are in the holy presence of the lord we must. i'm sure god is coming and say come what's going on did someone die <laughs> He's an exciting God. That's why David shouted. He said, praise him with a shout. <laughs> Woo! Think about it. He said, praise him with a shout. He said, praise him with the sound, the instruments, the, the cymbals. You know, he said, you know, cymbals, they make a lot, a lot of noise. You know, imagine those, not even the, the drum set, the one you hold and just pow. You know that thing? He said, praise him with it. So when you just get pow, you're like, oh, God said, yeah, that's, that's what I like. Praise God. He's a loving, enjoyable, rejoicing God. So don't think your gloomy face makes him happy. No, it doesn't. It makes him wonder at you. Praise God. All right. So where are we now? Hmm, thank you, Jesus. 
the hope of our calling. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, the hope of our calling. We've been talking about the purpose, the hope, and the manifestation of our call. Now, I know today is Friday. Praise God. So, so watch out. Titus. Now, we read Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. He says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Now, watch this. Verse 3, Titus chapter 1, verse 3. But had in due time manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Brothers and sisters, he said that God promised eternal life before Adam was created, before the world began. He promised eternal life. And now, watch this, in due time, but had, he used the word had, which is past tense, but had in due time manifested. He didn't say shall manifest. He said in due time manifested his word. Which word? His word of promise. Which word of promise? That eternal life will come to you. He says in due time he manifested that word, which he, he says true preaching. Remember, Jesus came and began to preach and say repent and believe the gospel. Why? Because the kingdom of God is here. Now, Jesus was the one that brought that eternal life. And what's the key to eternal life? If anyone believe in me, hallelujah, anyone believes in me, he shall have eternal life. I told you, he has been given authority. Now, here Paul is saying, look, we have this hope. And that's why we have believed. And God who promised cannot lie. And because he cannot lie, he has actually manifested this word. By giving us eternal life. And how did he give us eternal life? Through the preaching of the gospel. Through the preaching of the gospel. Hallelujah. So Jesus came preaching the gospel. And today, Jesus has anointed us to preach the same gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is not going to explain Bible to people. No, that is not the gospel. That's not the gospel. The gospel is not talking about Jesus Christ. The gospel is manifesting our obedience in Jesus Christ. I say this, a true preacher or a true teacher of the word of God. It's not the one who has gone to the best theological schools and now he's telling you the Greek and the Hebrew. That doesn't mean he's a good teacher. A good teacher is one who is manifesting this life. I'll tell you why I say he's a good teacher. He's going to have first-hand experience and knowledge in the word of God. There are many people who preach and they don't have any experience in it. They don't have any experience in it. See? So, so how do you qualify to be a teacher? Because you are, uh, Jesus came preaching. And he says the kingdom of God is here. Receive it. All right? Now, he anoints us and sends us to preach. Now, we are not just sent to preach. That's why he told the disciples, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Don't go out preach. Now, there was a time Jesus sent them and gave them power to go preach. You understand? And then went there and came back with so much testimony. But now he was leaving. He says, don't go anywhere until the Holy Spirit comes. Now, why? Because when the Holy Spirit comes, ah, he will anoint you as he anointed me. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. So Jesus said, hey guys, wait until you be endued with power from on high. So when that power comes, you are going to be anointed. Now when you are anointed, you know what it says? It says, it says when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me. Witnesses that, what, what, how do you become a witness? Not by carrying your Bible to go preach. Witness that every Everything Jesus said is true. So how do you know it's true? Look at my life. The Holy Ghost manifesting in your life brings to pass every promise that Jesus made. So when we talk about life, it is the Holy Spirit in us that manifests that life. When we talk about the goodness of God, it is the Holy Spirit in us that manifests that goodness. It's not our knowledge of the scriptures that manifests the goodness. It is the working of the Holy Spirit in our life. Now, what is the working of the Holy Spirit in our life? <laughs> 
Let me read something to you. Titus chapter 3. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Titus chapter 3. Same Titus chapter number 3. And look at verse 7. Watch this now. He says, That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. See, now we have been justified by his grace. Automatically, we are made heirs, not as recipients, um, inheritors. Inheritors of what? He says, inheritors according to the hope of eternal life. Watch this. What is the, the hope of eternal life? Ah, this thing, Elikabaya. <laughs> the hope of eternal life has stated this. That anyone who believes in Jesus, and I said this believing in Jesus is not a one-time thing that you say, today I believe Jesus. So the preacher says, come out, confess this with me. No, it means from that day, I will begin to believe Jesus. See, now that is what repentance now is. Turning away from everything I used to know, everything I used to be, and now believing in Jesus. So what does Jesus' words do to me? It begins to take me in different dimensions and directions. I'll give you an example. Paul said something. He says, let him that stole still no more but rather let him walk with his own hands so that he will have to give i want you to observe something he said now you used to be a thief so he says let that person stop stealing okay so he stopped stealing so what should he do now let him go get a job okay he gets a job What's he getting a job for? He said the purpose of him getting a job is so that he will have to give. He used to steal before. He wasn't stealing to give. I don't think so. I don't think so. I wanted to catch the meaning of this gospel. So he used to steal. Now he says, tell him to stop stealing. Okay, so he's not stealing anymore. What should he do? He should go get a job. Okay, so he's got a job now. But hey, he shouldn't get a job so that he would live his life. No, he should get a job so that they will pay him at the end of the day. When they pay him, he starts giving. Why did he say he should start giving? I'll tell you why. Because the kingdom way is giving. See, the reason he was stealing was because he didn't have his needs met. He didn't know how to get his needs met. Maybe he was lazy. So first of all, let him show activeness in getting a job. Now, when he gets a job, he's turning away from his evil way. But when he gets a job now and they pay him his salary, the first thing he should think about was now how to believe the gospel and start walking in the light of the gospel. How? By giving. What do you mean giving? First of all, he begins to give his tithes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that is what the gospel teaches. The gospel teaches that we give. Jesus said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Now, I hear preachers preach today and say, look, there is no spiritual benefit of giving. There is no promise, to God, uh, promise from God when we give. What a lie. Who, I don't know who lied to those people. I don't know which gospel that they are talking about. I don't know which gospel they believe. Jesus said, give and it shall be given to you. Paul says, hey, he that sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He who sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. What's he say? You sow, you reap. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples one time, say, look, there is no man who has left father, mother, house, land that will not receive in this life a hundredfold. So in giving, you are participating. That's when you give to God, you are participating in eternal life. And if you participate in eternal life, there is a hope for that giving. Praise God. My time is up. We're going to now enter into this from next week. Listen, 
you are going to have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye-bye.